Very good. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming along. It's great to get together, think about door knockers, uh, religious door knockers in particular. We're not, not too worried about the salespeople this time. Maybe we can deal with that one another time, how to get rid of those guys that want to sell new cell phones. Um, but before we, before we start, let me just read a passage and then open with some prayer. This comes from 1 Peter chapter 3. Even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it is good to be together. It is good for us and, and we are glad in our hearts and we rejoice as brothers and sisters. We thank you, Lord, that we can come together and just think about the opportunity that presents itself when people knock on our doors we acknowledge that often we don't know what to do or we don't want to deal with it. And we pray that you would help us as we talk through this issue just to gain, gain wisdom, gain understanding. And by your spirit, would you continue to lead us and guide us that you may be exalted and the gospel might go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, just a, I guess a rundown of the plan. Um, these nights are intentionally not Logan telling you about stuff. I'm not an expert on the stuff we're going to be engaging with. Um, I haven't run away and done a whole bunch of homework, so I can tell you what, what you all should think. The idea is, hence why the seating is like this, the idea is that we talk through this issue. So I've, I've gone through and thought of some questions that will hopefully prompt us to interact with this. I found three videos that we'll get to as well, short little clips about dealing with door knockers two more on the comical side and one a re quite intense debate between two guys and then we'll have some more discussion after that um, so we'll just might as well just get straight into it so uh, sometimes the most useful thing we can ask is um, how have we responded really poorly to religious door knockers um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go first I'll set the example um, so multiple times I've just ignored them. You know, you just do the hide somewhere tactic that normally works pretty well. Just, oh, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not home. Um, but I think it was the most classic for me was the, the day before we went to, we had a young adults and family group and we ended up talking about this. And it was the day before that that I had someone knock on my door and I walked down, I opened the door and I was just like, yeah, nah, not interested and slammed the door and walked off. And I was just like, oh, and it's just, like, I'm so, oh. setting the example, Logan. And then we go to the young adults and family thing and we're talking about this and Joe Seller goes, oh, that was like when you opened the door yesterday. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Thanks, dear. Yes, that's right. That, just like that time. I really nailed it. Um, so who's had some had some poor poor reactions and dealings with them. Yep. So anyone want to share a story? Like, how have you done this poorly? I think what you're talking about is sort of a knee-jerk reaction, isn't it? Before you think, you're, you're just, oh, thanks for my thanks. Yeah. And then you think, oh, shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Have you, have you seen, seen other people doing anything different like poorly have you seen any real shockers oh uh, it's interesting if you google like what po poor taste ways to react to jehovah witness and mormons you see some pretty shocking ideas of people that do stuff out there you know everything from big signs to inappropriate door door knocking things and it's like people just generically really don't like religious door knockers and the interesting thing is christians used to do it all the time like it used to be fairly commonplace for Christians to knock on doors as well. Not so much today, although Catherine was telling me, who did you have? I had um, three people at once, but one was um, Salvation Army and the other two with him were from the Baptist Church. And they, and they had another group of people going around as well. And they just, um, they just came to the door and um, 
they said, we are not J-Dubs. <laughs> <laughs> what an introduction, we're not J-Dubs. Yeah, um, and anyway, they, they started off by asking me a question, which, and I sort of basically gave them the gospel message, and then I found out what they were, you know, what they, well, I said what I believed in, which encompassed that. And they, um, and then they just were, you know, thrilled to meet yeah. a Christian person along the way. And That's really exciting. Uh, yeah, but they t- we talked for a little while, actually. But, yeah. yeah, I was in, I used to live in, oh, close to Narawahi. Well, I went to a little church there, and they door knocked the entire town. You know, so it's, it's the stuff, stuff that still goes on, but it's probably not what people generically think of. Although most non-Christians probably can't really separate the groups either very well. So it's just one mass of religious people. Um, so who's got maybe some stories of responding well? In what way have you responded well to religious door knockers? How can you respond well? Actually, I've got another example of responding poorly. Sorry, John. Um, don't open a Greek New Testament. That's not, that's not a good plan. Uh, so I did that with one. I just finished learning Greek and I was like, yes, now is my opportunity to make someone feel bad with my Greek Bible. So I got my Greek Bible out and basically just schooled them on what John 1.1 1, 1 says. Um, and it, it worked really effectively. Like this person had no idea what to say, but the problem was they then brought like one or two elders for weeks and weeks and weeks. They came to me. It was really tiring. So don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think... The last place I was at, I wanted to be really intentional, and so I thought, all right, I'm going to think about it so that if somebody comes to the door, then I'm going to engage in discussion with them at the door for as long as possible yep. um, and kind of put input into what they're saying, bring it back to Jesus. and Yeah. Yeah, and so they keep going back to works, but I keep... Nice. Pulling out scripture and saying, "But Jesus." Yeah. Um, and but they kept coming back um, until they stopped. But oh, so you won? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't persist, Rod. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of experience with with Mormons uh, years ago. Uh, invited them in, and they came in. But I pretty soon found out, and they started their presentation. Uh, <clears throat> if you ask them a question or question something, uh, they're programmed. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they rewind three minutes and start again. <laughs> you ask them a question, they rewind three minutes and start again. They won't engage. Yeah. They've got their script. They stick to it. Yeah. The other one was I used to engage with Mormons. Used to uh, I used to work in uh, an office uh, upstairs opposite South Wall. There were always Mormons across the road talking to passers-by, so... Yeah, oh, the ones with the sign things? Yeah. Yeah. So I engaged with them quite a lot. Uh, And in the end, I said, well, look, you know, I've been... I've been talking to you and listening to you for long enough now. You need to come to my church. And to my absolute surprise, they said, okay, we will. Really? And they did. Wow. Three young guys, but... uh, Probably about halfway through the sermon, one of them suddenly got ill and they all had to leave. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I've done my share of not responding well. And <laughs> um, I do remember um, one time, uh, I think I'd been doing a course at Grace on engage, engaging with cults and <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> things. I thought, oh, right, well, perhaps I'll rethink this. And um, I do remember it was JWs. So we didn't seem to get the Mormons in our area. So it's the J-dubs that usually knock at the door. Um, and just engaging with them and they just ask questions. So I was just you know, quite up front with what I believe, very much focused on Jesus. Yeah. Um, they did talk about coming to a Bible study or whatever, but they never did. I, I can't remember. It's quite a long time ago now. I can't remember exactly what I said, um, but said I think I said something along the lines, well, if you'd also like to hear what we believe, we never got any more visits for years. Yeah. <laughs> Funny so I don't that. think that they were offended. I think that we just must have got marked as too hard basket yeah. or not worth yeah. following. But too Christian. Yeah. Like, like... But, but I did interact with them, yeah, and, and, and very much, yeah, just really saying what I believed and very yeah. much focusing on yep. the person of Christ and knowing that I was going to heaven. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing, oh, to be honest, I've always wanted to, be the sort of person that says, come into my house, drink a cup of coffee and sit down and chat, you know. But 
honestly, I just never do it. Like they knock on the door. I almost always just say so, my standard answer is, oh, I'm a Christian, you know, so I'm thanks, but I'm not interested, you know. And I guess I've always, so when I heard about this, I was like, I'd love to discuss this because I know I'm terrible at this. I just don't bother because I just, it's too, it's too time consuming and I have a thousand excuses why I shouldn't, you know. But deep down, I know here's a group of people, for us, it's J-dubs, you know. Deep down, here's a group of people who are actually interested in talking. They, they may not want to listen, but they're open to talking and they're giving me an opportunity to talk to them about this stuff, you know. So I remember... Um talked to Andrew McPherson one time about it and, and he was I guess pointing out that you need to be talking to them on your time not when they just happen mm. to arrive yeah. when you're busy something and say, yeah. look, if you want to talk about it then come back at this mm. time or whatever mm. and then I'll be prepared to engage yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point. point yeah that's a good idea mm. um, some of us might remember oh sorry Warren yeah. um, from St Andrew's days um, <coughs> a long time ago um, so that we're probably talking late 80s. Um, <coughs> just a local person called George, I can't remember his last name, Rod might, uh, was a JW in the Papakura Manurewa area that done a lot of door knocking and was used to all the normal ways people responded. But he actually became a Christian through somebody just engaging with him at the door and taking wow. the time to have him in. Um, and he suffered obviously a lot. He persecuted, yeah. he was rejected yeah, from his family. Um, but we had him at St Andrews to come and speak to us once on what it had meant that somebody actually took the time yeah. and that's how he became a believer. Mm. So that's just somebody locally that yeah. Yeah, we interact with. Him. And just to add to that, <clears throat> same story. Um, this man said that one, what, what surprised him was when Christians were very positive and that they, they knew what they believed, as in they believed in Jesus, and yep. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and we believe that God sent his only Son into this world to die for our sins. And because of that, that we know that we are saved and we have sure hope of eternal mm. life. And he said that just hearing Christians saying that they were sure that they were going to be heaven for eternity yeah. was just surprising. And But he said... The, it was the people who were positive, not the ones who, you know, yeah, might have been Christians. I'm a Christian, don't want. Yeah. Um, that yeah. it sort of ate away, yeah, and then ate, that person, yeah. somebody, then mm. was able to witness and give him a Bible, mm. and he started to read. Yeah, but I think assurance is probably one of the biggest things, because it's the thing they lack more than anything else. They they have, they have a Jesus of some sort. They have a Bible. They have a God. They have all the other stuff. It might be incorrect, but they have some form of it. What they have zero of is assurance. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest areas that I've just listening and observing picked up off uh, you guys as well as other people as well. Um, what's, the, what's the biggest difference between these two different reactions? The good and the bad. Probably both have the same result in the end. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, <clears throat> most of the time, yeah. Because even if you are positive and engage with them, this yeah. fellow from years ago, notwithstanding, yeah. uh, that is very yeah. unusual. It is. But what's, I guess what I'm asking, what's the difference going on in yourself that creates these two different reactions? Oh, <laughs> I think we're a bit fearful if we yeah. go to hide. Mm. We don't need to. Mm. But... We often that, don't know the end result, either. And that's this question here. What do you find scary about engaging with these people? Not being ready. ready. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So it's the times that they've come, and I'm just like, I am in pain. I did not want to see people today. Yep. I just can't. Like, yep. you know, I'd be happy to engage with them another time, but today I just, this is too much. Mm -hmm. So sometimes just, it's in the too hard. Day. Yep. Which is interesting considering what Andrew said. You know, I think we probably do have to account for that. Sometimes it's just not feasible, you know, especially you think you're a mum and you've got three children and one of them, you're in the middle of changing their nappy and someone knocks at the door and it's like, someone tell them to go away, you know. <laughs> um, and so maybe we need to be more honest to just say, look, I can't talk to you right now. Come back in two hours, you know, or come back in a week. They probably will. <laughs> so, so what else do you find scary about engaging with them? I think... Yeah, well, look, I mean, I don't engage them very often because I'm never home yeah. when they come knocking, but um, I think my thought is that it's, it's likely that we 
we're just at home minding our own business and they are prepared and they do this all the time. Yeah. You know, they have to. Um, and and they're schooled and, and I guess that's a you know, perhaps a fear for us that we're, you know, can be caught on the hop. Yep. By um, someone who has all the pat answers. I think I think that's a big one for me, I think. Um, I'm scared to look like an idiot. You know, I'm, I'm a pastor. I mean, to know what I'm talking about. They come to my door and they say stuff and I'm like, uh, I don't know how, I don't know how to answer that. You know, I don't have a good reply. I can't instantly think of a text that responds to that, you know? Um, and I think that's with a lot of things, not just religious knockers. Yeah, with the two of them as well, and you're quite often yeah. ways out. Yeah. Well, that's true, especially for you ladies as well. That's more of a difficulty possibly. I don't think I'd find it scary because we've had a few at Hill Road. I think it's because we've experienced the, um, as Rod said, the programming. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. I've decided it's it it's a waste. My decision is it's a waste of time. Yep. So if they come and they pull out a magazine, I say to them, you're JWs, aren't you? <laughs> yes. And you're from the Watchtower. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I've probably decided it's not worth the effort because I know the result. Yeah. yeah. I think the other thing also, Logan, is just how uh, I, I've gone to a few conversations with them in the past, um, not the recent one that was, I left that to Grace. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a bit of me, right? They stood in the hallway and looked at me, I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your support, proceeded, yeah. And then proceeded to Google the way through. <laughs> That's right. Um, but yeah, I've been in a few conversations with them in the past and just uh, they tend to take like just about every single bible verse way way out of context yeah. so i just sit there oh, being yeah. like That's okay it. let's have a look at this in context and then it's basically an endless circle of them quoting a verse and then be like well let's have a look at this in context rather than <laughs> yeah. just the one verse so it just gets slightly tedious yeah yeah they just and of course as far as the J uh, is concerned if you're going to start discussing scripture with them you need to be aware that uh, the bible they use is not the same as the one we use yeah it's vastly different. Yeah, and, it, it, and they're experts to take a little bit of a verse from here, and a little bit of a verse from yeah. here, a little bit, of, and put it all together and say it says this. Yeah, but yeah. of course it says no <laughs> such thing. Yeah, it's it's very important if you are going to engage with them to stipulate what we're talking about. You know, so I know my dad, my dad's been known just to invite them in, come in for a cup of coffee if he's on a day off, come in, and they'll just sit down. And I mean, my dad's been a missionary and he's a pastor and he loves doing this sort of stuff and he'll talk your ear off if he's worse than me. Um, so he'll sit down with them for hours and, he's, and he says to them generally, okay, that's fine, but we're using, I'm, I'm using my Bible. I'm not interested in what your Bible says. Um, and that, because that's the point of engagement, you know, uh, because there's no point in us using different Bibles. It's like, okay, let's sit down with a Buddhist and they'll use their holy book and I'll use mine. It's, well, we're not going to really get it. You're not going to get anywhere, you know. So we've got these three videos, two by Francis Chan, if any of you know who that is, and one by an, a, a trained apologist. So Francis Chan is going to tell a story there. We're going to see this trained apologist who all he does is goes to places and talks to people. So the one we're going to watch, he goes to Utah by one of the biggest temples and speaks to a guy on the street, you know. Um, and then another Francis Chan story. And, and we're going to follow up some questions after that, talking about just what are the main sorts of things that you hear them doing? Now, what I'm not trying to suggest to you is um, we need to make sure we become apologists. But it, what are the themes they're sort of really driving at as you watch it? Right, so three, three very different things targeting different things but there's quite a similar thread that runs through it so what what are some of the areas the speakers focused on what are some of the main sort of themes running through that you pick up on multiple gods multiple gods yep what the bible says what the bible says all three of them each time like this verse says this, this verse says this, but even their last one, just like, have you tried just reading the Bible before? <laughs> because they, they say they embrace the Bible. What else? Particularly in the first one. 
talked about prayer, answered prayer, experiencing the Christian in relationship with God. Yeah, relationship with God. Having a personable relationship with God and being known with God and having a God who would answer your prayers and love you. It's foreign concept for them. It's a foreign concept for any works based religion. You cannot in a works based religion you can't have a personable relationship. You know, it's like having a personal relationship with a tyrant. It just doesn't happen. Because you're spending every part of your energy trying to make sure they're not angry at you. Um anyone pick anything else up? What do you think are the most important areas to focus on if you're going to talk to someone? I think the prayer thing and your relationship with God is mm. pretty important mm. to say to them because that's the one thing that <coughs> doesn't exist for them. Yeah. I think who Jesus Christ is. Yeah. Um, we know who he is, but then <laughs> the others don't. Yeah. See, that, the thing is, you can, you can engage on hot debated topics like you saw with the second guy. And if I, I, it goes for about another eight minutes or so, I think. And they really dig down into this eternity idea and stuff like that. And, they start, and you can do that, but it's probably not going to be that fruitful because they're so ingrained with that in their head. But if you can find the areas which they just don't have any understanding of, it actually opens up a platform for discussion, you know? Because if you say to them, well, what do you think about Joseph Smith? Well, you're, not, you're never going to get anywhere because, well, I've got lots to say about Joseph Smith, you know? But to say, what do you think about assurance or having a personal relationship with Jesus? They're sort of stumbled for thoughts and ideas. Russell? Yeah, I had two Mormons used to come every Wednesday afternoon and we used to sit and discuss for an hour or two and... The subject that was always the relationship between faith and works. Yep. And uh, in the end, they did agree that works were a fruit of faith. Yeah. But it took a long time to get to that point. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, obviously that's going to be one of your biggest points of tension, because and it comes back to the assurance thing. Um, so w one of their beliefs is. It's effectively God gets us to X and then we have to do the rest to make sure we get there. And, and what that means is in order for you to get there, you have to do everything to the best of your ability. Well, please put your hand up if you've done absolutely everything to the best of your ability, you know, so that you can never have hope. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, let me just keep my hands down as I say that. Um, you know, if, what, what, what's... What's more godly, going to the movies or helping at a food shelter? Well, helping at a food shelter. Have you ever gone to, a, gone to the movies? Yes. Well, you haven't been the godliest possible. So therefore, by your own admission, you're destined for hell. Like, where is your assurance? Where is your hope? You know, so it's trying to find areas to, to push down. Um, in order to target things like assurance, uh, personable relationship with Christ, and God, um, because both, especially God, is very distant, distant as well. Um, and prayer, works, and law. What do we need to do? If you, yeah, know the Bible. <coughs> have a personal relationship with God. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. If if you don't have a close relationship with God and with Christ, it's going to be very hard for you to chase down that trail, isn't it? Because. You know, I mean, if you listen to Francis Chan speaking, I think in the first one where he's like, you know, I just, I just love Jesus Christ. And, and here's, a, here's an opportunity for me to share this wonderful person with these people, you know, because he's so precious to me. He's so amazing. I want them to know him. And if that's the truth of your heart, they're going to they're gonna feel that. That's going to ooze out of you, you know. It's like when you meet those there's people who have either just become Christians or for some reason they're just like infectiously crazy Christian people and all they want to do is talk about Jesus. And when we were in Huntley, there was this lady who would sit. I said to her, what do you do? She goes, I just read my Bible. I'm like, yeah, but, yeah, but what do you do for fun? You know, she goes, I just read my Bible. I'm like, all the time. She goes, yeah, I just go home after work and I just sit there and read my Bible and then I go to bed. 
and I get up in the morning and I just read my Bible and pray and then I go to work. I'm like, do you do anything else? She's like, no. Why would I want to? You know, and I'm like, that's a really good point. Why would you want to? You know, and she was just always like that. She was just so intensely in love with Jesus Christ, you know. And I guess if, if my heart had that reality, what would I look like when I spoke to someone at the door, you know? So I, I honestly don't believe we have to have super apologetic minds like the second dude. I don't think we need to be able to quote heaps of scripture. You know, we need to know our Bibles, but we need to know the general themes of the scriptures rather than being able to say, you know, in Deuteronomy 24 verse 11, it says, and you go, well, I know in the Bible it says, and I know we, we learn, you know, and if you read the Bibles, you would know that Joseph Smith's X and stuff like that. So, I don't, yeah, there's a place for apologetics, and we don't want to, I guess we don't want to play that down. But I thought it was interesting that the last guy sort of said, I, I want to get into verses yeah. here and there, you know, but what, what's the whole point of this book? If you just read the book, yeah. what does it say? Yeah, targeting the big picture as opposed to the fine details. You know, it's a little bit like if, if you speak to a Muslim, you can talk to him about what the Hadith teaches, or you can talk to him about uh, their views of abrogation and this sort of stuff. Or you can, hey, let's talk about Jesus. You know, what, what do you think about Jesus? Because they believe in Jesus. Some, they believe of in a Jesus, you know. And, and you, you stay big and wide because we will have, we have a good understanding of big wide. We've been brought up in the scriptures, most of us. Um, we haven't been trained on the fine of details. They have. That's a reality. So if you, if you go down to the fine details, they've been trained to talk about that. So someone comes and knocks on your door. Is this mission work? Yes. It is, isn't it? See, look, to be totally honest, I don't want to answer my door. That, that's the truth of my heart. I've got a whole lot of things I'd rather be doing. I might, it might be a Monday and I've got uh, uh, the novel I'm reading at the moment in my hand. I'm actually reading a novel at the moment, shock horror. Um, and I don't really want to go down and knock the door or answer the door. But it's, I guess if I hear Francis Chan in the first video, here's a mission opportunity. Here's a person that needs the gospel and they're knocking at my door, you know. And that's, I guess that's scary. I mean, if we look at this encounter in terms of what the expected outcome is going to be, um, we've got people coming to the door who are fervent about converting you to their worldview and nothing else. Yep. And you, as a good Christian, are adamant <clears throat> that you're not going to be moved from your Christian worldview. So what is the point of the encounter? And um, I think that's what you've touched on here. Yeah, it's a good there comment. Is, there is an opportunity for mission. Yeah. Well, and, and the funny thing is that's, that's the reality of every human in the world. Every single human in the world is, firmly believes that they have zero reason to believe in Jesus Christ. That was my heart when I was 15, 16, 17. I had zero. Why on earth would I want to give up all this fun to believe in Jesus Christ? That makes zero sense whatsoever. And I was pretty well convinced of that. But the gospel opened my eyes to see how beautiful Jesus is, you know. And the same can be true for them. I mean, the reality is we might open up our doors to every single Mormon and Jehovah's Witness and every other crazy door knocker on the face of the planet. Actually, that's an idea. Next time someone tries to sell you a mobile phone, ask them if they want to hear about Jesus. Um, oh, you're a door knocker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, was going to say that before. I recall having a guy, I'm just not quite sure how he, how he ended up in our place. But it might have been door knocking or something, but it was, I, I think he was like Amway or, you know, it was, it was about a business opportunity, you know? And, yeah. And, he, and I decided to let him come in and talk about it. And uh, he shared all this, you know, this business opportunity or the rest of it. And I said, look. You've um, you've shared that with me now. I think you owe me. <laughs> oh, nice! A little bit of time. To, <laughs> very to nice. Share a business opportunity that I've got for you. <laughs> nice. That's very clear. But oh yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, How long did you stay? <laughs> 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 he listened through. He listened through. I mean, I don't know what he was doing. And and I think sometimes you can be brash with people and say that type of stuff. You know, that's fine. 
you can come in, I will listen to what you have to say, but then you have to listen to what I have to say. You know? And if, if you've got limited time, I'll give you five minutes. You, you give me five minutes, I'll give you five minutes go. You know? And you've got five minutes to tell them how beautiful Jesus is. You don't, look, honestly, you don't even have to talk about Mormonism. You don't even have to talk about Jehovah's Witnesses. Just talk about the beauty of Christ. He is just far beyond anything they have to offer. That's the reality. My, my, my short-term answer to them when they knock on the door, when they knock on the door is, um, what do I have to do to be saved? And every time they're going to say, oh, you're going to have to do A, B, C, and D, and because God's gracious, he'll forgive you and make up the rest, you know? And I'll say, well, I know my heart, and I'm never going to do that. But, but in Christianity, what, what we found is that God did everything in Jesus Christ and I don't have to do anything. And that's great news for someone like me, you know. And that's the complete reverse. So if all you've got is 30 seconds at the door, just go straight for the jugular, go straight for assurance because really it's what we've got. That they don't. It's like the same thing as talking to a Catholic. If you're engaging with it, actually any religion, every single religion on the face of the planet outside of the Christian hope assurance is the thing you can go for so just get really good in talking about the fact that you know you're saved and you'll be able to interact with every other person on the face of the earth so what needs to be our motivation heart and attitude during speaking with them we've already talked a bit about it i think one thing i was going to point out as well is motivation being like i guess we can get into the trap of being like our motivation is for that person's salvation, but at the end of the day, we're not being paid commission by God. Like, <laughs> God, God's the one who saves people, not us. So, you know, even if, for instance, every single person we talk to during the course of our lifetime, even if none of them come to salvation, it doesn't matter because that's not what God's asked us to do. He's asking us to actually just talk to them mm. rather than achieve salvation. Mm. That's his job. Success is not um, numbers, the number of conversions. Success is defined by faithfulness. How faithful you are, are you to the calling? Um, the question before about why we're scared, um, you know, is connected with this as well. And that I think mm. we're scared because partially because we don't think we can do a good, good enough mm. job to convert mm. someone. Yeah, true. I think when that's always a temptation, I think it's up to us. Mm. We have to be good enough to do that. We have to be enthusiastic enough. <laughs> spirit-filled enough or um, apologetic enough or whatever but the reality is that we don't yeah it's it's up to god to do that we really i guess need to be consciously depending upon him at that Mm. point yeah it's a good point it's not reliant upon us to actually convert them what what other motivations would there be i think there's to be uh, love for the people around you just that jesus loves you Mm. So if you open the door and can portray that. So, so big two probably big motivators I see. One is um, eternity. Heaven and hell's on the line. You know, this is an eternal soul. This person's got different beliefs and they may have some weird, but in the end, we're talking about eternity with Christ or eternity without him. You know, so that's probably number one motivator for me. Second is Jesus who says, um, if anyone who, oh, come on, it's right there. Anyone who is ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of in front of my Father in heaven. But anyone who confesses me, I will confess before my Father. So this picture of, this picture of Christ standing before his Father in heaven and saying, oh, hey, here's Logan. Here's Logan. Guys, guys, this is, this is Logan. I'm just acknowledging Logan right now because he wasn't too ashamed to, be, to acknowledge me. You know, I'm like, that's just amazing. Like, what a motivator for me personally. Maybe it's just my proud heart that wants to be acknowledged. I don't know, but I'll take it and run with it. <laughs> um, so what sort of attitude do you think we need when dealing with these sorts of people? What do you notice particularly with the second guy? Because the guy he was speaking with was quite fiery and irate. He was chill. He was really chill, eh? Constantly a low tone. Just a real sense of humility and I just, I just want to talk with you, you know. I just, I, I really want to engage with you. Let me just, let's, let's chat, you know. I'm, I'm not here to lord over you. I'm just, 
look, just let me point you to this, the Bible. Let me point you to Jesus. Just that real humble, calm type attitude. Because we're, we're not interested in arguments and yelling and screaming. It goes there real quick. Um, but if, there's no faster way to lose an argument than to lose your cool. The second you lose your cool, you lose an argument. Even if you kind of intellectually win, you still lose. Um, better to have them lose the plot and you sit there with a humble attitude because that's going to do more for Christ than anything else, I think. What's one practical thing we could do now to grow in this area? Get them in. The door. <laughs> Let them in. Yep, that's a pretty obvious one. <gasps> and don't palm them off to grace. <laughs> You can, you can be like Francis Chan with his daughter. You know how he kid takes his daughter and says, come, come listen to this. You could be like, Grace, come sit down and listen to this. Let's talk to this person. You know, I thought that was quite an interesting one though, actually. Hey, kids. Can you imagine what that does for your kids when they see the parents doing that as well, like interacting with someone like that? Um, I say that as a father who's never done that with my kids, you know? So, well, what, what things did we say before? We said we needed, in order to do this, we, we needed to, know what we're talking about so be in the scriptures if we never read this it's going to be pretty hard to interact with someone about it um the other one was relationship so how are you going to foster your relationship with christ you know if you've got a, a heart bubbling with jesus like francis chan he can probably talk to anyone and just every time you hear him speak about something this just relationship just oozes out of him you know um and then like he talked about answered prayer. Yeah, there's nothing more exciting than talking to people about answered prayer. Yeah, you know, I went fishing the other day and the weather was, at, well, it was a couple of weeks ago now. Weather was absolutely atrocious. And I was paddling along on my kayak and I, and I just, you know, one of these throwaway comment prayers to God. It's just like, God, you know, it'd be really amazing if I could catch a fish. I've just spent like two and a half hours battling two and a half K against crazy wind and swells and I'm exhausted and I have nothing to show for it. A fish would be great. And within about five minutes time, the entire sea went flat and the wind disappeared. And I was like, wow, this was not what I expected at all. And I dropped my line, catch a fish and go home. I'm like, God, you're just, you're so amazing. Is this what it was like for the disciples when Jesus is like, stop, you know? But people can't understand that, you know? We've got a God who listens to us. That's amazing. And nothing, and I think another thing that you could maybe... I haven't tried it with anybody that's come to the door, but I was thinking now after all this, another thing you could do is, yeah, you can show people that nothing is too small mm. for how much God cares mm. for us. And and like you was just saying about the fishing, well, I, I often do these prayers for God to get it so that I can get across the road mm. and I mean people might think well God's busy he wouldn't be interested in that you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. but I think it's good for people to know that that actually he does care yeah. and if you ask him and, and that but yeah that's cool <laughs> that's great so okay, but, um, go Russell uh, the Mormons and even Muslims and the others were nearly always accepted your testimony. Yeah. Um, I've given out dozens. There you go. Grab some Gospels of the New Testament, keep them next to your door, even if you don't have time to talk to them. You know? Do a trade. That's great. Do they, do they insist on you taking the watchtower? And you know, so so some, some people feel uncomfortable. Do an exchange for a Book of Mormon for a New Testament. <laughs> and to be honest, they, they'll take. Yeah, jo Josella and I were talking about this earlier today. You know, how do, you, how do we feel about taking stuff from them? Because in their religion, they're gaining works by you taking stuff from them. But the, re the reality is they're lost or they're lost. So whether they get some more works or not, they're still just in just as much trouble. You're not making them more lost by taking something from them. So I th I'm quite happy to take their stuff and burn it in a fire and give them the say, gospel we've got of recycling John. Bins. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right. So, mate, mate that's a great thought. Let's... <laughs> Yeah, I'll take all of them. That's right. Yeah, that's a great thought, though. So now, now let's tie this to something Shane Kennedy said. Shane Kennedy did a testimony up here, and he talked about the fact that he took the Gospels and wrote his testimony in the front, you know, and then handed them out, gave them around the neighborhood. You know, we could do that. Like, just grab a stack of them and write a short testimony about your relationship with Christ and why you have assurance in your life. Two, three paragraphs. And then every time someone knocks on the door, just if you haven't got time, just do a trade. I tell you what, I'll read yours if you read mine. It's really short, you know. 
and they'll look at it and go, oh, groan. But what if, you never know what God's going to do. That's would right. you actually go and read it? I wouldn't read this. No way I'd read it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> I, had to, I, I, I had to read one once and in Bible college. I had to read their watch were their what's called watchtower argument against the Trinity and then write a response. It was the most cringe worthy thing ever. It's just they just malign the word of God in everything. And there's just enough truth dropped that it kind of makes sense. But as soon as you go to those passages and look at them, they, they just annihilate everything. Um, but anyway, what's next? Well, I've got a few topic ideas for the next one. I've had a few people suggest things to me. Does anyone have anything they want to suggest now? If not, feel free to text me or email them to me. If you feel super awkward about saying it because it's we a weird topic, Write it on a piece of paper and chuck it on Lynn's de desk or in the offering box would work too because someone will pick it up when they count the money and be like, what on earth is this? And somehow it will mysteriously make its way back to me. Um, but yeah, if you've got some ideas, chuck them through. I've got four or five at the moment to pick from. Um, the next one will be just after we get back from leave. So I'll be fired up and ready to sit here and let you guys talk again. Um, but yeah, that's it. How about I close in prayer? Anyone, unless someone's got some last burning, desiring comment. Good. Oh, Jaya, yes. I think one thing that really helps me, whether it's Jehovah's Witnesses or just people I don't feel ready for or ready to see, I just have to remind myself at the start, they are made in the image of God. Yep. So Amen. handle them well, <laughs> like you know, love them well. Even if it takes a lot of, just give me five minutes so I can go around the corner and just <laughs> settle and yeah. then go back out. Yeah. Kind of thing. But yeah, it's, it's really hard to like steady your heart before you go. Mm. Mm. It's good for good thought to close on. Thank you. Let's pray. <sighs> Father in heaven, we do thank you that. Every human on the face of this planet is made in your image. From the most despicable to the most winsome. And every single one of them is an image bearer of God. And Lord, we thank you for this time where we could discuss and think. And, and we do acknowledge that we are really weak minded and, and our, our desires are small and our hearts are small. And Lord, we fail in so many ways, but we just ask that you would give us such an intense love for Christ and such an intense love for people around us that we would want to engage with people for the sake of the gospel. Lord, we, we acknowledge along with Paul that we are not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And we pray that as we give out the Gospels of John to people, as we open up our homes, as we pray for them, we ask that by your Spirit you would give them life and life eternal. And we, we, we think of this man at St. Andrew's who became a Christian and we pray that we would have testimonies like that to tell of people who have come to know you just by someone giving them a cup of coffee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So next month, same time, same place, fourth Saturday, we'll eat some dessert. So if there's any left over, you go hard, finish it up so we don't have to take some home. Thanks, guys. Thank you.